appropriate attire and Shabbat behavior and all of those things. What I love is that we are able to be a community that teases and connects and makes fun and, and just very quickly can turn and have Shabbat and understand that when we gather and bring screen to screen to screen and location to location to location from, let's see where we are this Shabbat from Hawaii to, I'm not sure if we have California. I know we don't have Chicago because I believe that Dan is not here and we don't have Arizona because they're back in Cleveland um, to, let's see, um, wherever we are, to Cleveland, to wherever we are, we bring all of our screens together and we connect them. And they look perhaps like little boxes, but each of those boxes comes together into a sanctuary. And that sanctuary is holy. And that sanctuary we have been building and creating and sustaining now for many, many months, for 13 months and counting. And that is an extraordinary thing. And it means that sometimes we make jokes and it means that often we hold each other up and it means that we learn and we grow. And so as we enter Shabbat, we take a deep breath in, And we release. We take another deep breath in. And when we release this time, we will release the week, the stress, the frustrations, the hardships of the week. And now when we take our last breath in, we will breathe in the sweetness of Shabbat and hold on to it. And with holding on to the sweetness of Shabbat, we will continue to welcome Shabbat with song, Deb. Yes. Let's do Hine Matov because it is good to be here together.
We turn, <clears throat> excuse me, we turn now to light our Shabbat candles and say Kiddush. I hope you've taken a moment to go and get your Shabbat candles and your Kiddush cup and join me as I share my screen. And I'm going to move this for one sec. There we go. Join me as we uh, light the Shabbat candles. Even though you are muted, you please read with me. We gather the candles light in our eyes as we bless your name, even as our ancestors blessed you from before and rested smiles upon our faces. Beloved creator, you fashion Shabbat and wrap around us the light of your peace, even as we praise you, even as we bless your name. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu, lehadlik ner, lehadlik ner, shel shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who makes us holy with mitzvot and who teaches us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. The heaven and the earth were finished in all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing and God stopped, for, and God stopped on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because on that day, God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, bore peri hagafen. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvot taveratzavanu v'shabat kocho be'ahava uvratzon hinchilanu zikaron lemase bereshit ki hu yom tehila lemikrae kodesh zecher letziad mitzrayim Kivanu vachata, viotanu kidashta, mikol hamim, veshabat kochecha, veava uvratzon, hinchaltanu, baruchatarunai, mekade shabat. Amen. L'chaim. <clears throat> Our opening reading this Shabbat is in honor of Earth Day, which was this week. I also believe there was a, a temple member whose birthday was this week, but you know, we'll leave that alone for right now. Um, so. This was a pretty momentous week, and this opening reading is dedicated to our precious, precious earth. I am the earth and the earth is me. Each blade of grass, each honey tree, each bit of mud and stick and stone is blood and muscle, skin and bone. And just as I need every bit of me to make my body fit, so earth needs grass and stone and tree and... And what's beautiful about that poem is that we can continue writing it. And our job with the earth as caretakers of the earth is to continue writing the earth story. We continue with the Baruch Hu, the call to worship. We rise in body or in spirit. 
Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Vahed Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. We continue with the Shema, the watchword of our faith. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto, Leolam Vaed. Please be seated. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha Uvechol me'odecha Ve'ahayu ha'devarim ha'ele Asher anochi metzavcha Hayom al levavecha Veshinantam levanecha ve'dibarta bam Beshivdecha bevetecha uvlachtecha vaderech uvshoch becha uvkumecha uksharam lehot al yadecha vehayula totafot benenecha uchtavtam amizuzot betecha uvisharecha leman tiskeru vasitem et komitvotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ani adonai lelohechem asher hotzeti etchem meeret mitzrayim lihiot lachem lelohim ani adonai lelohechem So we turn now to Michamocha, which is well known now that it is our song of freedom. It's when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, they stood on the other side and they proclaimed God's greatness. They finally understood that they were free. And it's become also now our song for justice, our song that reminds us that there are so many who are not free. So many who have not experienced that moment across the Red Sea, that moment of freedom, of liberation. And so it's become our clarion call, our call of responsibility. As we sing Micha Mocha this evening, let us remind ourselves of our work for justice, for equity, for equality. Lie, 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 lie,
来来，来来来来来来来来来。From celebrating freedom and remembering our obligation to continued social to continued work, we also recognize our own need for protection and connection. And so we turn to Hashkivenu. Hashkivenu is our evening lullaby, our request from God to continue to put us on a good and straight path and to provide for us a sukkah shalom, a shelter of peace. We sing together. Like this week was really busy. This week was crazy busy. Oh my goodness! I don't know. Some weeks are busier than others. Oh my gosh! So One of them. I, <laughs> I'm really glad that we are that you're going to sing Vishamru in a minute because. Vishamru has that one word that you know I love. The last word in the song, Vayinafash. Yes, because we don't need Vishamru. I mean, the truth is that we're already celebrating Shabbat, so Vishamru is a little bit redundant. But the word Vayinafash is a reminder of what Shabbat is supposed to do and be for each of us—a moment of renewal, a moment to be refreshed. And boy, I don't know. I seem to really, really not just busy, but there was a lot of stress. So I need that moment. Absolutely. So let's sing. Well, and I chose the melody that really encourages us to relax tonight because I need it too. Well, thank you. Oh, 
Shabbat Vayinafash Veshamru Bnei Yisrael Et HaShabbat Lazot Et HaShabbat Ledorot Amrit Olam Veshamru We turn to the Amidah first to this slide, which we call a prayer, but isn't a prayer. It's our uh, meditation, our return to focusing into the next set of prayers. And then the next prayer is the Avod Ve'imahot, reminding us that we stand here because of those, the work of our forefathers and foremothers and the, and we stand on their shoulders. And then the give wrote the strength of God and then the sanctity of this day. We'll chant straight through these next three prayers. Please rise in body or in spirit. Adonai sefatai tiftach ufi yagi tehilatecha. Adonai open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Elohe avoteinu v'imoteinu, Elohe Avraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sara, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leha. Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanora el el yon gomel chasadim tovim v'kone ha'kol v'zocher chaste avot v'imahot who may be geula livne v'nehem leman shemo be'ahava melech ozer u'moshia u'magen baruch ata adonai magen avraham ve'ezrat sara. Atagi borle lamadonai, Mechaye ha colata, rav le hoshia, Mechalkel chaim bechesed, Mechaye ha col berachamim rabim, So mechno flim verofecholim, Umatir asurim, Umekaye memunato, Lishe ne afar. Mi ha moha ba gevurot, umi do melach, melech me mi du mahaye, umat mi ach yeshua, bene mahana tale hachayot hakol, baruchata donai, mehaye hakol, atakadosh vishim hakadosh, ukedoshim behol yom ya haleluha sela. Baruch atah Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. You know, I have to say that uh, I'm going to miss you turning my pages for me when we're back in the sanctuary. <laughs> Deb, I'll do anything for you. Run over, <laughs> turn them over. And then <laughs> I'll run over back and forth. I'll get my steps in during services. Anything for you, Deb. <laughs> You're so good to me. <sighs> but you won't miss it when I miss my cues and you're stuck in the middle of a prayer and I forgot to turn the slide. Well, there is that, that. you won't miss. Thank you. I, yeah, that's true. But you know, it is a good segue because we're turning to, you know, one of our favorite moments in the service, which is our moment of gratitude. And so as I am really grateful for your music and you are grateful for me turning the pages for you, we have a lot to be grateful for. Um, even during our hard times, even during these challenging times when we, I miss seeing all of you face to face and I miss hugs. 
I miss hugging all of you. We have still found ways to be together and we have still found so many silver linings. So we turned to singing Shalom Rav and we turned to the chat, which is in most screens in the bottom middle of your screen. And we make sure it's clicked to everyone and take a moment to share what you're grateful for. Take a moment to share those um, moments of gratitude and thankfulness with our sacred community. Shalom Rav al Yisrael Amcha Tassim Leolam Shalom Rav Reading those is a joy and a light in my week. And we're gonna to have to find a way to do that and turn Deb's pages when we're back in the sanctuary or outside. Um, and we know that even as there are so many things to be grateful for, so many beautiful moments, there are also many people in our lives who are struggling. So many people we know who have physical illness, mental illness, just struggle in their lives. And so we turn now to the Misha Berach. And we, turn, we know that when we offer a Misha Berach, a prayer for healing, that we lift up those we love with prayer and encouragement and love, that they feel that. And some measure of their pain is lifted even for just a moment. And so once again, we turn to the chat and we, with permission, put in the names of all of those who are struggling so that they may have just a moment, just a moment to ease their pain. <laughs> Bless 
take a few moments now for silent prayer and reflection. So tonight we turn to our third uh, installment of Turning Points. Um, and I'm going to very quickly spotlight Rabbi Ali. Um, just you can wave and then I'm gonna take you off spotlight. Um, I might bring you back in a minute. So for those who have not been here for the previous two services, just a quick review as to what uh, turning Points is. It's a periodic ritual celebrated as part of Shabbat services. During pandemic, it's been harder, so hard, to pay attention to the transition in our lot, transitions in our lives that deserve to be honored. And so Turning Points is a ritual to honor major moments in our lives, providing space and place. And we know there are so many turning points in our lives. Uh, in the last year, uh, in our congregation, we've missed sharing so much together from retirements, welcoming children and grandchildren, grieving delayed bar and bat mitzvah, career changes, grief without communal support. We have been through it all. Turning Points honors the holiness of all of our journeys. And so we're going this we're going this evening to hear one person's story. We're going to hear Tessa Gable's turning point. And we know there she is. Hi, Tessa. Um, she's on spotlight now. She's been here all evening, but now you're spotlighted. We know that stories are powerful. They connect us to each other. They inspire deep reflection. 
And while you're listening, you'll have a chance to learn from Tessa and possibly learn something about yourself. You've had a second to say hi to Rabbi Ali Fishman, who is a camp director, Camp Newman in California, uh, and an artist. She will be illustrating, live illustrating. She's drawing right now, which is why I took her off spotlight so she could keep working, um, this shared ritual experience. Each ritual, the two so far, Tessa's, and we have a few more, she'll join us, illustrate live the experience of this evening. We've received a grant for Ali to do this. And so all of these pieces of art will come together and be brought into our sanctuary, reminding us that being away from the synagogue is a turning point too. And so I'm so grateful to Tessa for being our speaker this evening. This is not an easy thing that I've asked. And so Tessa, I'm gonna turn it over to you. I am going to literally get out of the way. Thank you, Rabbi, uh, for the opportunity to share a little bit about what's been going on with me during this pandemic. And Rabbi Ali, I can't wait to see um, the artwork which you are going to, to give to us. And, and this is such a wonderful program and I'm so honored to be part of it, so thank you. We hear it all the time. I am not the same person I was a year ago. And this year, more than any other, this applies. If the last year has taught us anything, it is that we can control very little of outside ourselves. There isn't a person on this planet not affected by the coronavirus and life will never be the same. On March 13th, my boss came into my cubicle and told us to grab a few things that we would be working from home for the next couple of weeks until this thing called COVID-19 quieted down. Awesome, I thought. I had already spent the first part of the year stuck in a condo I wasn't exactly thrilled with while I recovered from surgery. The last thing I wanted to do was spend another two weeks without human interaction. He also suggested we stop at the store, which seemed reasonable. Still not comprehending the seriousness of the situation, I was further confused by the crazy amounts of toilet paper I saw in other shoppers' carts. By the time I got to that aisle, there were no paper towels, no tissues, no cleaning supplies, and only three packs of toilet paper left. I grabbed one, I checked out, stopped for gas, and went home to hunker down with my dog, Harley. That night, sitting on my sofa, I re reflected that three days prior, I had been in downtown Cleveland having a very nice dinner and was at Playhouse Square for the opening night of Jesus Christ Superstar. And today, the whole country was pretty much shut down. At least I still had yoga, temple, and the nice weather to ride my bike. I was going to need it. Then the unwelcome notice that the yoga studio I attended was going to cancel in-person classes followed by in-person temple attendance being canceled. Thank goodness for YouTube and the leadership here at Suburban Temple for quickly, so adapting so quickly to Zoom. One by one, bullet point by bullet point, my yearly goals were put on the back burner. I discovered yoga several weeks prior and quickly noticed the mind-body connection. I was able to get a handle on my severe anxiety for the first time in years without medication. When things reopened in June, I started to attend yoga classes at a different studio with more of a therapeutic and restorative lineage. I continued to gain strength and mobility and my anxiety was almost non-existent. In addition to this, I ran at lunch and rode my bike for over a thousand miles between April and September. As two weeks turned into a month, and then into four months at the end, and the end of the summer was approaching, approaching with no end to the restrictions in sight. 
I like to stay active, so being stuck inside for months worried me. The plan was to draw and paint, to do puzzles, to read, <clears throat> and to immense myself in a 200-hour yoga teacher training beginning in September. This would get me out of the condo for a whole weekend, keep me active, and be around other humans while teaching me about the philosophy and how to properly do poses. Why not, I thought, but what I wasn't prepared for was facing myself, my flaws, and my second biggest fear of speaking in front of more than three people. <laughs> in October, we received a letter from the CEO that said we would be working from home at least through Labor Day of this year. The week between Christmas and New Year's, I packed up my desk, I brought my monitors and my other computer equipment home and set my home office up indefinitely. The new normal was Web's WebEx, Skype, a cell phone, and Zoom. The days started to run together and my anxiety started to rear its ugly head along with its sidekick depression. Something had to change. After some reflection, I considered the isolation a gift, a gift to overcome my fears and improve my flaws. This, ongoing, this is an ongoing, deep, solitary, and messy work, but necessary. Necessary because to make a meaningful contribution to life or society, we must connect to our light within or our soul. The search for my soul what my soul needed led me to Judaism four years ago. I wanted a direct relationship with God and it is with this desire that I became a Jew by choice. In January, when I found out about the B'nai Mitzvah class, my soul told me that this was the next step. And on my birthday next year, I will have the honor of reading from the Torah in an ancient language that it was written in with five other, five other wonderful humans. Next Friday, I will teach my yoga practicum class and in May I will graduate with 200 hours of training under my belt. However, I've gained so much more than the physical aspect. Through facing my fear, I connected with myself. There is a yoga ethical practice called non-excess. The Sanskrit word, brahmacharya, I probably butchered that, but translated means walking with God. And it reminds us to enter each day and each action with a sense of holiness rather than indulgence. Deborah Adele writes, seeing with the eyes of holiness shifts how we act as well as how we see. There is an inbuilt need to pause and give thanks. With gratitude and wonder sit in the heart, when gratitude and wonder sit in the heart, there is no need for excess. Seeing everything as holy brings a continuity to life. It's gr it grounds us in centeredness. We treat other better, others better as we treat ourselves. On Sunday, January 31st, 2001, sometime around 8.15 a.m., my Judaism and yoga education collided. Heading north on Auburn Road, I wished my mother a happy birthday, having faith that she somehow hears me. She would have been 66 years old. As I approach a stop sign in Chardon, it is quiet and still, nothing moving, except for the snow that floats gently through the air. I thank God for witnessing this beautiful and peaceful moment. And I realize for the first time in my life that I am fully present and I am centered. I had let go of the illusion of control. I'm not thinking about what lies ahead for the day, worried about my dad, wishing my mother and I had a better relationship or material things that I do not have. It felt deeply intimate, just me being in awe of the beauty which lies before me in nature and being comfortable with myself. 
this week's Torah portion, God tells the people to live lives of holiness. And for me, in a Honda CRV on an early, cold, snowy Sunday morning, I experienced a moment of holiness through gratitude and acceptance of things I cannot change and trust in a future I cannot see. Shabbat Shalom. Tessa, you are extraordinary. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story and being our teacher. We're going to turn now to Deb, who will, I'm gonna let you uh, not be spotlighted. We're going to turn to Deb, who will share her song and uh, Rabbi Ali, who will share her drawing. been good at beginnings lines fading off into the distance I love the sense of endless possibility skies and no resistance but it's the choices we make that determine our life shapes that tell us who we're gonna be and it's the chances we take that define our direction that separate the you from the me on, let's celebrate the you and the me. Now the days move on just like the ones before. Trapped inside an empty box, always wanting more. I don't want to settle for mediocrity, no. But it's so hard to drag this dream into reality. But it's the choices we make that determine our life shapes, that tell us who we're gonna be. It's the chances we take that define our direction That separate the you from the me Come on, let's celebrate the you and the me Come on, let's be the people we were meant to be When I come to the end, complete the circle upon the moments that made the journey will I close my eyes and enjoy it all again or will I have to wonder at what might have been but it's the choices we determine our life shapes that tell us who we're gonna be and it's the chances we take that define our direction that separate the you from the me come on let's celebrate the you and the me come on let's be the people we were meant to be
Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, who brings us to this joyous moment, to this moment of story, to this moment of sharing. We are grateful for our blessings. We are grateful for the struggles, for the losses. We are grateful for every moment because they remind us of our unique humanity. We are grateful for support, for connection. May we continue to uplift and care for each other. May we continue to learn from story. May we continue to understand and note all of our turning points. May the spirit of this community, the inspiration of story, the harmony of music and the beauty of art bring increased fulfillment and goodness to our lives. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Rabbi Ali, I'm going to ask that you stop sharing your screen. Show us, oh, look at that. And we'll bring you back one more time to share. We're going to, yes, thank you. We're going to take a deep breath and move back into our service. And to Elenu. Elenu is, you know, it, it's a turning point in many ways because it turns the service towards the end of the service, but it also is a reminder of our partnership with God to make this world the most beautiful place it can be. Please rise in body or spirit. Let us adore the ever living God and render praise unto you who spreads out the heavens and established the earth whose glory is revealed in the heavens above and whose greatness is manifest throughout the world. You are our God, there is none else. Vanachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. Benemar vehayadonai, le melech al kol haaretz, bayom hahu, bayom hahu, yeh adonai echad. Ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. We turn now to our time of remembering. I bring you this beautiful quote from Mary Hall. If I should die and leave you here a while, be not like others sore undone who keep long vigils by the silent dust and weep. For my sake, turn again to life and smile, nerving thy heart and trembling hand to do something to comfort weaker hearts than thine. Complete these dear unfinished tasks of mine and I perchance may therein comfort you. On this Shabbat, we are thinking of Bonnie Dick who just died today. Family arrangements are being made. And we think of those who have died most recently in our temple family, Florence Bernstein Kahn and the yard sites, the anniversaries of death that fall on this Shabbat. Israel W. Cohen, Shirley Dackner, Clarence Dettelbach, Morton R. Dworkin, Louis B. Feldman, Louis A. Fox, Linda Freeman, Harry Gershon, Ab Glickman, Samuel Grunzweig, Erwin S. Heyman, Benjamin Harris, Jesse F. Hayes, Sheldon Heimel, Donna J. Katz, Nat L. Lefton, Milton Lieberman, Allison S. Leventhal, Ben H. Newman, Saul Scholnick, Leo B. Seidenfeld, James E. Shook, Nina Lehman Stone, Molly White Turner, Eugene Wallens, Meyer Warsawski, Emil Weil. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled, and so we turn to the mourner's cottage. We rise in body or in spirit. 
Yit Gadal, Viet Kadash, Shame Raba, Vialma Divra, Hirute, Viam Lichma Hute, Bahayehon, Uviomehon, Uvhaye to Hol Beit Israel, Baagala, Uvisman, Kari, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shme Raba, Levorah, Leolam, Alme, Almaya, Yit Barah, Viet Tabach, Viet Paar, Viet Romam, Viet Nase, Viet Hadar, Viet Tale, Viet Talal, Shame de Kudisha Berehu, the Elamin call Birhata Veshirata, Tushbahata Venehamata, Da Amiran Bialma, the Imru, Amen, Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shamaya, the Chaim Alenu Vial call Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. O say Shalom Bimromav, Huya Ase Shalom, Alenu Vial call Yisrael, the Imru, Amen. May the source of peace and peace to all who mourn and give comfort to all who are bereaved. And let us say together, Amen. Our closing song this Shabbat is an important one. It is um, based on this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion uh, has in it, um, actually Rabbi Shana's favorite Torah verse, love your neighbor as yourself. And it is based on the uh, Torah portion Kiddoshim from Leviticus 19, the Holiness Code, which really talks a lot about how we are to treat one another. And one of the most difficult things for me this week was um, waiting for was the Derek Chauvin trial. And I know for weeks and weeks, this has been a point of stress. And so for me, the fate of the fact that Kiddoshim happened this week, the week of the Derek Chauvin trial, and a reminder of how important it is for us to treat each other with holiness uh, is meant to be. It is absolutely meant to be that we are in Kiddoshim as a reminder that we treat each other with love. And so Deb is going to sing this beautiful song.
I'm wondering if during the benediction we have Rabbi Ali share the drawing while we offer our closing benediction. Great idea. I love it. Okay. So Rabbi Ali, if you'll share, then we'll have our closing benediction. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of God's presence shine upon you and be gracious to you. Yes, Adonai, Panave Lecha, Meyasem Lecha Shalom, Veyasem Lecha Shalom. May God lift up each one of us, and may God bring us shalom, peace, and wholeness. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm hesitant to share our announcement screen, but so maybe I'll um, let Al, Rabbi Ali keep going. <laughs> I don't want it to stop. Okay. But I am going to say Rabbi Ali, I do want to, um, sh- I do want to let everyone know what's going on. So I'm going to ask you to stop for one sec. So very quickly, we just have a couple of things to show you, and then we'll say mozi. On Sunday, we do have uh, our tent to fila. So if you are not enrolled in a class, please join us at 9 a.m. You can just come in from 9 to 9.30, 9.45 for to fila. Um, then, of course, we have classes. May 2nd, we have our Pam Pamela Schuler class. Um, program, you do need to register. So you can go to our website or you can email any one of us and we will get you to the registration page. So please come and see Pamela Schuler, seven o'clock on May 2nd. Dina Nair Menlowitz is our MC. So, you know, doubly you must come. Um, May 16th, Tikkun times three, um, a whole day of celebrating our learning program, repairing the world and learning for Shavuot. So, and we will be in person outside. So May 16th, that is going to be an extraordinary day of um, air hugs and learning and growing and being together. All right, Deb, I'm gonna get my challah and we can start. I got it. I didn't forget it. Whoever else has a challah, hold it up so we can enjoy your chalot. Love it. Yay. All right, here we go. Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our prayer is humbly said. Baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam Amotzi lechem min haaretz Amen, b'te avon Amen, b'te avon everyone B'te avon, we did um, go a little bit long tonight but I know it was worth it um, Tessa, oh you can unmute everyone let me unmute you oh my goodness I'm still talking aloud, there you go <laughs> <laughs> 